Number 56. A steel ball is dropped onto a hard floor from a height of 1.5 meters and rebounds to a height of 1.45 meters. Calculate its velocity just before it strikes the floor. Okay, so we have a ball and it falls down and uh, it's just dropped so we know its initial velocity here is zero. And it says that it falls a total of 1.50 meters until it hits the floor. We'll assume the floor is here. And we know since the ball is being dropped and it's essentially floating in air, it's not really floating, it's moving, but um, it's freely suspended in air, that we know the acceleration of the ball, and that is the same as gravity, so negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Um, what else do we know here? Uh, it now wants us to find, and we don't know the time, right? We also don't know uh, the final velocity, meaning when the ball finally strikes the floor here. Uh, we can try to find that, though, and actually that's what the question letter A is asking. Calculate the velocity just before it strikes the floor. So we want to calculate the final velocity here. So how do we do so? Well, let's look for a formula uh, that relates our displacement. Okay, now remember, when we plug in, the, the displacement has to be negative because it's traveling in the negative y direction. Okay. Alrighty. So uh, let's see. So we need to uh, use a formula with displacement, initial velocity, acceleration, and then we have to solve for final velocity. So it looks like uh, the best choice here would be equation number four. Right, so we'll write final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity squared is gonna equal the initial velocity, which is zero squared, plus two times the acceleration, which is negative 9.80, multiplied by um, our displacement here, which is negative 1.50, okay? So the final velocity squared will be, let's just plug that into the calculator, so 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 1.5. We get a value of 29.4, uh, 29.4, and then we take the square root to get rid of the square. So now we find that the final velocity will be equal to plus or minus, because remember, whenever you take the square root, it has to be plus or a minus 29.4. <clears throat> so we get a value of 5.42 meters per second. Now which value are you going to choose, or which sign I should say you're going to choose? You're going to choose the positive or the negative. Consider the direction of motion. Which way is it going, up or down? It's moving down, right? So we would choose the negative uh, direction. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Let me just erase this and I'll put the negative sign there. Great. So that's the final velocity, and that completes letter A. So that should be uh, fairly straightforward. So now let's take a look at uh, letter B. Calculate its velocity just after it leaves the floor on its way back up. All right, so let's draw a new uh, little diagram here. So now, after it hits the floor, the ball is going to bounce back up. All right, we want to find the initial velocity here. We don't know what it is. That's what it's asking us to calculate. We do know that it is going to reach an ultimate height, as it told us in the problem, of now 1.45 meters. Okay, great. So that's my displacement. This time it's positive because the ball's moving in the positive y direction. Um, I also know it's going to reach an eventual, once it reaches its highest point, what's the velocity up here? What's the velocity when the ball gets to its highest point? Zero, right? So for this problem, that's considered the final velocity, because that's my frame. And since the ball's in the air, Right, we also know the acceleration, so it's negative 9.80 meters per second squared. So consider everything I wrote down, acceleration, displacement, final velocity, initial velocity, what equation relates all of them? Same one, right? Equation number four. So for letter B, let's write it out. Final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times AX. Okay, so the final velocity now uh, is going to be uh, zero squared. The initial velocity is something. We're trying to figure that out. Sorry, vi squared plus two times the acceleration, negative 9.8, oop, negative 9.80. And now the uh, displacement is a positive 1.45. Great, so zero is equal to vi squared minus, let's do the math, two times negative 9.8 times 1.45. Value comes out to be negative 28.4. OK, 
Okay, so I'll add this value on over to the other side. 28.4, notice how now it becomes positive, which it should because we have to take the square root now. 28.4 is equal to vi squared. Take the square root. Remember, your answer will be plus uh, positive and negative here. Okay, that equals, oh, so that, that, okay, let me just try that again. That equals a positive negative now, square root of 28.4. Great, so 5.33. So we get 5.33 meters per second. Okay, great. So that takes care of letter um, C. So now let's move on to, um, uh, no, sorry, that takes care of letter B. Let's move on to letter C. So now it says calculate its acceleration during contact with the floor if that contact lasts 0 0.08 milliseconds or eight times 10 to the minus five seconds. Okay, so when we think about this, um, we can just think about a simple acceleration formula. So remember, basic acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. Okay, now the change in velocity value, oop, the change in velocity value is going to be the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time, right, or the change in time. Okay, so given the context of this question, what is the final velocity? Well, you might mistakenly say, oh, here it is. Right, this is it. Right. And that's not the case. I mean, that was the final velocity, but that was the final velocity for part A. In part A, I ended the problem as soon as it made contact. So it actually won't be the final velocity for now this equation. Why? Because now I'm only considering if I now zoom in here, and I'm going to really zoom, like, so the ball's coming in and it's just making contact. Right, just made contact. What's its velocity? Well, that's what we found over here. Negative 5.42. And then it's going to rebound, right? And all of a sudden it's going to come back up after it hits. And then it's going to be 5.33. So this is essentially the initial value. And now this is the final in terms of this frame. And they gave me the time in which uh, the contact lasted, right? That was the 8 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so those are the values we're going to put in here. So we have the change in acceleration will be the final velocity, which is actually 5.33, then minus a negative 5.42, divided by 8.00 times 10 to the negative 5. So let's throw that into the calculator, and let's see what we get. So we get 5.33, essentially plus, because it's two negatives, 5.42, and then take that answer and divide it by eight times 10 to the minus five. And we get a value of approximately, I'm gonna do three sig figs, 1.34 times 10 raised to the five. So that's five meters per second, meters per second squared. So that is the acceleration there. Okay, wonderful. Now. Letter D. So how much did the ball compress during its collision with the floor, assuming the floor is absolutely rigid? So what does this word compress mean in terms of our physics variables? Acceleration, velocities, times, or displacements? Well, it's probably going to represent a displacement, right? Because that's the only thing, and when we're talking about compressing an object, we're talking about squeezing it, right? And the length is changing. So it makes sense that we're talking about um, uh, an x value there, all right? So for letter D, let me put that over here on the uh, right-hand side. So we want to consider what we know, right? Remember, the frame of the problem is essentially right here again. Okay, so I'll redraw it. So the ball is just making contact with the floor here. It has an initial velocity of, as we mentioned, negative 5.42. Then as soon as it hits the floor here, it's going to rebound and come back up with a velocity that's considered now the final velocity of 5.33. We just calculated now that its acceleration is 1.34 times 10 to the 5, right? So 
what do we want to find? Again, the key is here. The key here is knowing that the compression is all about finding the displacement. So this is simple now, right? If we look, we know the initial, we know the final, we know the acceleration. How do we find displacement? Man, it looks like again we're going to be using equation number four, popular equation in this problem. So we get the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus two times the acceleration times time. Uh, excuse me, two times the acceleration times displacement. So the final velocity here was 5.33, that's squared. Then the initial was negative 5.42, that whole thing's squared, plus two times 1.34 times 10 to the fifth, multiplied by then the x. I'm just going to shove it down there. So let's do it, 5.33 squared. That works out to be... 28.4, negative 5.42 squared. That works out to be negative, well, it would be positive, uh, 29.4. And then two times that acceleration should be now two times 1.34 times 10 to the 5. Right, 2.68, so it's two. Hold on, this is going to be 2.68 times 10 to the 5x, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's subtract this on over, so we get uh, 29.4 minus 29.4, okay? So this should just be a negative 1, negative 1.0 1 is equal to now 22.68 times 10 to the 5th. Right, and that's x, and then just divide this on out. 2.68 times 10 to the fifth, divided by 2.68 times 10 to the fifth. So the steel ball will change by this displacement. So negative one divided by 2.68 times 10 to the five. Okay, great. And we have here, so it comes out to negative three, Point three point seven three. Hold on one second. Yeah, three point seven three times ten raised to the negative six, and that'll be in terms of meters. And that sounds reasonable for a steel ball. Okay, it shouldn't really compress by that much. All right. So that concludes this problem, guys. Thanks for checking us out. I hope it helped, and uh, please do subscribe. Until next time.